forecast from September 1st through the 15th, 2018. Hope you guys are all doing well, and thanks so much for uh, just being here with me for these readings. And yeah, just hope you guys are all enjoying your summer, uh, wherever you are, or winter, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. For your reading today, I have selected three different decks. I'll be using the Modern Spellcasters Tarot right here by Melanie Marquis. I'll also be clarifying cards with the Everyday Oracle, also known as the Vera Sevilla Italiana. And then at the end of your reading, I'll be pulling a guidance message from the Butterfly Oracle Cards for Life Changes by Doreen Virtue. So if that sounds good, let's go ahead and get started with your reading, Scorpio. And this reading is for all Scorpios out there that may be watching, whether you're a Scorpio Sun, Scorpio Moon, Scorpio Rising, Scorpio on the House Cusp, or have your Venus in Scorpio. Spirit, what are the bi-weekly love messages and energies that you have for the sign of Scorpio from September 1st through the 15th, 2018? What do they need to know regarding their love lives from September 1st through the 15th, 2018? For all Scorpios out there that may be watching. Scorpio. One more for Scorpio, please. September 1st to the 15th, 2018. Mm -mm, that wasn't a good shuffle. Let's do one more here. We're going to look at your current situation. What is helping or hindering you? What has put you here at the foundation of your situation? Your thoughts and feelings over the next few weeks. This is also what you'd like to manifest. Your recent past. Your near future. And then at the bottom of the deck, we have the Four of Pentacles in reverse. So let's take a look at this card. We have a man in the upright position who, I don't know what you would consider this position, but he's got every single part of his body trying to hold on to a pentacle. So pentacles represent the earth and the physical realm, things that we can touch and feel. So, so sometimes in the upright position, um, this can indicate um, someone who is miserly, someone who is conserving their energy. Um, they may uh, be trying to save money, for example. They may also be hoarding. Um, this can also indicate not wanting to open up. So it can be also very closed down emotionally. Now, this card doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to have a negative meaning. It can just be someone who is, um, they don't have a lot to give, either emotionally or even monetarily, so they need to hold on to what they have, and they need to save and conserve their energy. Now, the card is in reverse, and remember, this is the underlying theme or challenge of your reading. And in reverse, it talks about letting go. So, this can be someone who is spending uh, money very uh, too easily, so they're throwing their money away. They may also be giving things away. They may also be giving things up. Now, this can have to do with a relationship as well, letting go, opening up, starting to open up. It can sometimes say that um, someone has a hard time. Um, they can't, um, they can no longer kind of keep their feelings to themselves. It, it, they just kind of come out. So this can also be uh, letting go, opening up, overspending, um, let's see what's underneath the High Priestess. Okay, so someone could be opening up about a secret. Someone may be also uh, letting go of um, something that they've been holding on to, not opening up about. Um, this can also be 
like I said, just um, someone who may be clearing out the clutter kind of thing. So letting go of of things, people, um, material possessions, etc. Sometimes it can indicate overspending or just letting go of money and resources without too much, um, I wouldn't say without too much care, but it's kind of like throwing your money away kind of thing or throwing your money at something. So let's take a look at your cards. Tower in reverse. Your challenge is the star reversed. What has put you here? We have the queen of swords. Thoughts and feelings. Page of Swords reversed, Recent Past, The Hierophant, Near Future, Ten of Pentacles in reverse. Okay, Scorpio. So you walk into September with the Tower in reverse. Okay, this indicates that there could be a small emergency. Um, this, this card also suggests that um, there's been a bit of a, a shake up here and there's a need to shake things up because what I'm seeing here is that in the upright, we have a tower being struck. This indicates your ego. So your ego somehow has taken a blow or taken a hit. Um, think of this as the check engine light coming in, coming on in your car. It might say, oh, you got to check the oil or you need to check this. So what would you normally do? You would take it into the mechanic or you might maybe have a friend look at it. Either way, it's kind of saying that there's a little bit of a... There's a need here for you to shake things up, okay? Um, you may have, um, you may be catching a problem early, for example, catching a problem early, dodging a bullet, so to speak. The problem is with the tower in reverse, the destruction of the tower is still happening. It's just happening at a much slower rate. So you may realize that there's a problem and have, you know, caught it early, but it still says that you, your foundation the foundation of a relationship, for example, is not built on solid ground. So we need to peel back the layers and get down to the core. What is really there? What have you really built this on? Because there could be some kind of, for example, a fault in the foundation. There's a crack showing. The cracks are starting to show kind of thing. So there's a need to peel back the layers and get down to the core. What is the real issue here? What the symptoms may be starting to show, but what is what's really underneath the surface? What's going on underneath the surface? Getting to the root of that. So the challenge is the star, and the star represents faith, hope, and optimism. Sometimes it can talk about astrology, our connection to the divine, um, our belief, uh, our our belief in um, th you know the divine, things that are greater than us. Uh, ask what, who, or what has been your north star? What what path are you following? What light is you know what light are you following? Um, and so in reverse here. The challenge is to remain optimistic and hopeful. Um, there needs to be healing. I, I, I pick up that there is a lack of healing, a very deep lack of healing. This is major arcana. We have two major arcanas in your current situation. So it suggests that there's, um, someone could be very pessimistic, someone may not think that there's any hope. They only see the glass as half empty, not as half full. So there's a need for healing. There's a need to rejuvenate the spirit. Um, also, this can have to do with belief systems as well. Where do you place your faith? Um, do you only see things as crumbling and getting worse, or do you see that there is hope and potential, and that you um, are you able to kind of heal yourself so that you can, um, you know, raise the vibration of those around you? What, who or what needs healing? Uh, where are the cracks starting to show? Where do you need to kind of apply pressure and start to see, um, you know, bring faith and hope and possibly this positive outlook back into the picture? Because this can also have to do with the reconciliation here. And it could be a situation where someone doesn't feel like there is hope for reconciliation or their hope is fading day by day. So. Definitely something to take a look at there. Now at the root of the situation, we have the Queen of Swords. Now some of you could be dealing with an air sign, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. We definitely have Aquarius here. Um, but the Queen of Swords, the personality of the Queen of Swords, she could be widowed, divorced. This is someone who has takes all the emotion out of the situation. She's a very good communicator. 
she's only concerned about the facts. Um, she's more empathetic than the King of Swords, but I would say that her compassion comes from a sense of logic. What is right? What is wrong? Um, maybe not so black and white as the King of Swords, but this is someone here who is, is not afraid to use her words to cut to the truth. She's very honest. She's very fair. She's coming in the upright position here. So this is someone who is willing to um, work for the truth, stand by the truth. Um, this can be a teacher, a writer, someone who is a very good communicator, very logical. She's not coming at this situation um, with any emotion. She's really coming at it like um, she's trying to be as fair as possible. So I'm seeing that this person is at the root of the situation. This may be, again, someone who um, has been through quite a lot. Um, maybe she's been through a lot of trauma. This can be someone who has had a lot of difficult experiences. Um, so the fact that she's coming up as a queen of swords is a source of strength and power, and it represents someone, really a woman possibly, female energy, who um, is really not afraid to speak up, and she's very, she just wants to present the facts as they are. She doesn't really want to get involved emotionally, um, and that's because it's irrelevant to the situation at this point. She just wants to kind of um, be as logical and as good a communicator as possible. So this can be someone that you're dealing with. And again, we can go in and clarify that. I'm seeing actually two cards here regarding um, communication styles that have to do um, well, lots of cards here that are, that are suggesting that there's communication going on, but not a lot of emotion of, involved, more um, communicating um, what's true, what's factual, what's logical. In the past, you have the Hierophant. So this can indicate um, in the past there was a situation or a relationship here that was... Um, calling on you to conform in some way. Now this could be, for example, a marriage. Um, it's just, the Hierophant is just basically a teacher and he's asking you to examine your belief systems. Who or what has been your teacher? Now, um, it's interesting because I've, I've, I was talking about this card recently to, to someone and uh, I was trying to explain to them um, what the Hierophant really represents, and he does represent knowledge, um, but he represents the knowledge and the wisdom of, of one's beliefs and values. So if you think about the Pope, what the Pope represents, um, what does um, someone who is the head of an organization, um, this is someone who is really interested in doing what they feel is right based on their values. And see, we have here to, um, I would call these, I don't know, maybe servants, they're bowing to him. So this can be someone who's very pedantic, someone who's very um, inflexible, very rigid. Um, they're trying to teach a lesson. Um, and it kind of asks the question, who or what has been your teacher? If you are the teacher in this situation, are is the way that you're teaching your students fair? Is the way, is are your... Um, are you being rigid or can you be flexible? Are you being flexible? I see the Hierophant as someone who um, is, likes to con is, is all about conforming. He can represent higher levels of learning institutions, government institutions, the church, etc. So this is someone that has a very um, rigid and I would say inflexible belief system. And um, they kind of um, come from it like, you know, this is the right thing to do. And, you know, they would kind of expect you to conform to the, the status quo, whatever, you know, society says is the right thing to do here. So this is about doing the right thing and kind of either um, this can be a situation where you've had to learn a difficult lesson or you've been in a position where you've had to teach someone um, the correct way to behave, you know, um, how to, you know, what are your beliefs, how are you communicating them, etc. So, yeah, I'm just kind of seeing a situation here where someone obviously is in a place of power and in a place to teach 
and there are you know their leaders and their followers so it kind of you kind of have to ask yourself was I in a position of leadership here um, was I be, you know being asked to communicate my morals and my values and how have I done in that regard was I was I um, were my lessons easy for my students to learn or were my lessons difficult was I very rigid um, or was I being very inflexible you kind of have to look at that um, for yourself but um, I'm seeing someone here who can be very rigid and inflexible someone who's um, kind of you know their word is their word and they probably um, there's little little emotion involved they kind of come at it like you know these are the rules and they might tend to be very inflexible so um, that could be the cause of this this situation here um, it may also be that there's an erosion of faith or an erosion of opt optimism that things are going to get better that there can be healing so um, yeah I mean there's no water the only there's water in the in the star card here yeah but it's being poured out here so um, there, this could be a situation where, you know, there is an unethical healer here or there is someone who um, is really not practicing what they preach or what they're preaching is not um, very flexible for their students. It's not something that is easily absorbed or that inspires hope or inspires faith or inspires healing or inspires optimism. All right, so in terms of your thoughts and feelings, you have the Page of Swords in reverse this is a difficult card and it's very tricky now remember pages are, are communicators and the page here if you can see is wielding a, a sword that's much imagine if you had this sword in your hand you wouldn't be able to hold it very long and it, and that might be rather inexperienced with it so this can be someone who um, may lack um, or again, this is in your thoughts and feelings. So in the upright, I'm seeing someone that can be thoughtful, curious, maybe more of a student learning how to communicate, learning what to say. Um, this card represents stalking rather than talking though. It's more of like a watchful energy. So here we can have someone who um, feels like cutting someone down with their words. This can also be gossip. This can also be someone who um, is interested in getting, is interested in communicating or, or watching a situation, but they may not be communicating very effectively. Um, this can be someone who is very inexperienced in terms of their language. They might say things, um, before they might speak, before they actually think about what they're saying. Um, but I, I usually, in terms of your thoughts and feelings, this can be someone who um, is feeling like um, cutting someone down with their words or speech, or someone that feels, um, this can even be someone that feels like they, they're being stalked themselves, or they're being watched, or um, they're prepared to swing. You know they're prepared to strike um, so the feeling would be a bit uh, it would be a difficult situation I would think and uh, one where you might feel like you want to lash out basically what I'm seeing here so I'll go ahead and clarify these two cards in the near future you have the ten of Pentacles in reverse so this can be a situation where it's involving someone that you've known for a very long time. This can be someone with regards to someone that you've known. Um, you know, the Ten of Pentacles is a card of family, legacy, long-term relationships. Here we've got someone who's just walking by and saying hi. So it's like, oh, hello, I know you. It's very familiar. Um, so this can be a relationship that's that's been very that's very old. Um, it can be a family member, etc. I'm seeing here a loss of security. I'm seeing the end of a long-term relationship. This can also say that, um, you know, the the 
something going on within the family, the legacy, the long-term security. Um, this can even be a loss of inheritance or a loss of money. Um, sometimes it can represent exile, um, being you know thrown out of the family or feeling like um, your security is being threatened in terms of a long-term relationship. Yeah, so that seems to be the direction that it's going in. Now remember, this is only over the next two weeks. And of course, um, energies will change, energies will be shifting. So um, this is just you know, what I'm seeing, and obviously this will not resonate with everyone. It's a general reading, but I am seeing that there could be some difficulties within a family situation, a long-term relationship. Um, there could be issues with a loss of a large sum of money. Um, and I think that uh, you may be very watchful of this situation. Um, there may be some stalking, there may be some like cyber stalking example. There may also be a feeling of um, gossip, betrayal, miscommunication, etc. So um, definitely, you know, you have to be careful because um, what I'm seeing here is that this could lead to um, um, a huge uh, falling out or um, someone letting go of some kind of um, long-term security here. So we're going to go ahead and, and clarify some of these cards. Who is this Queen of Swords? What do we need to know about this Queen of Swords and Scorpio's reading? Swords. What do we need to know about the Queen of Swords? No, too many. Yeah. I'm seeing that this can be a messenger, someone who's relaying either good or bad news. Okay, so. This can also be, represent news coming to this person. Um, she may be receiving some news. It could be, again, it could be good or bad. I'm just seeing a letter being received, a message. Okay, so there was some good or bad news coming. Um, perhaps this person is a messenger of some kind of news as well. What do we need to know about the Queen of Swords, please? I feel like this person is waiting. She's apprehensive. Um, I feel like the anchor to me represents, you know, that she's grounded. She's not going anywhere. But um, I do see this person waiting. She's hopeful. But um, I also feel like she's um, not going to take anyone else's BS right now. Um, because the Queen of Swords is someone who, very strong, very independent. Okay, we've got the comforting surprise. So this is some partial excess, a uh, partial success, not partial excess, um, but maybe less than expected. So I feel like this person is hoping for something, but you know she gets what she wants, but it's not, it's not. Um, it was less than she was hoping for. Okay, so kind of, um, I think it's like her expectations might have been too high kind of thing so that's why coming back down to reality kind of some news came in she was very hopeful she was very apprehensive maybe she was dreaming for for more but I do feel like there's there's partial success it's just less than expected what is this page of swords in reverse what do we need to know about the page of swords in reverse and Scorpio's thoughts and feelings What do we need? That almost flipped up. What do we? What do we need to know about the Page of Swords in reverse, please? Okay. 
We have the La Supervia. There's a peacock on this card and it means haughtiness. So this is someone who um, they might be feeling like showing off or someone here is being very showy. They can be very, it could be a lot of pride. Um, it does indicate arrogance, vanity, ostentatiousness. Um, but I'm seeing someone's pride is getting the best of them. Um, they, it's like all for show kind of thing. So that may be why they're not feeling like communicating. They'd rather just watch the situation. Um, but someone here is very proud. And um, sometimes, you know, some people put more emphasis on how things appear to be on the outside as opposed to what is really going on on the inside. We've got the thief. So this indicates someone who is trying to get away with something. They may be trying to, for example, steal someone's pride, steal someone's... Because um, the, the thief doesn't always mean lost goods, robbery, or fraud. It can just be someone who's trying to get away with someone, someone's being sneaky, or someone who's trying to take something from someone else. So someone might be trying to steal someone's pride, steal someone's, um, you know, for example, um, trying to remove, for example, the mask, the exterior, trying to um, get down to cut someone down with their words, for example, that's what I'm saying, or feeling like doing that or thinking someone is doing that. What is this page of sorts coming up in reverse, please? There's a letter. So this is about communication. Um, I'm seeing a love letter or a business letter. There is a letter coming in. It could be an email or a message. Now notice the thief is facing the letter. Um, so uh, they may be thinking about countering a message with another message. And the, the purpose of that would be to um, take someone's arrogance away, their vanity away, you know, take their pride away. And, um, but I'm, I'm seeing in both of these situations, this has to do with messaging and communication. Um, so actually Scorpio, uh, we are like over time right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and move forward with your guidance message. And um, Spirit, what is your guidance for Scorpio from September 1st through the 15th? What do they need to know? Please help guide them on their high spiritual path in love and in light, Scorpio. September 1st through the 15th, please. What do they need to know? just noticing how there's really no emotion in this reading. I'm seeing a lot of communication, but I'm not seeing, you know, anyone really expressing emotion. So it's just an observation. It may be accurate, it may not be accurate, but um, that's my, my observation from what I'm seeing in terms of the cards. All right, Scorpio, it says you're evolving and progressing, so it's natural for you to have a different perspective now than you did before. You drew this card because your feelings are speaking to you, and it's important for you to listen. Ignored emotions only grow stronger and louder. There's something in your life that is becoming intolerable to you. You once were able to endure or even enjoy the situation 
but because you have changed, so too have your emotions. This card asks you to be honest with yourself and take an inventory of how you're feeling. You don't have to resort to drastic action to resolve anything. Sometimes it's enough just to acknowledge your own feelings so that your heart feels heard and understood. Additional meanings, getting guidance from a therapist or joining a support group, dealing with an emotional loved one, empathetically absorbing other people's emotions. Yeah, definitely getting that. So, of course, take it with a grain of salt. Let me know what you thought. How do you resonate with this? And, um, of course, if you guys would like a more um, in-depth reading, I do have private readings available. Um, my website and scheduling page is listed below. And I really hope you guys have a wonderful next two weeks. I'll see you guys back at the mid-month. Take good care of yourselves. Love and light.